Alright, what is up my lovely people? This right here is a game, I think it's pronounced Ys. It's either pronounced Ys or Ys, I'm not sure which. I should probably have looked that up before I proceeded with this so I didn't make myself look like too much of a dumbass. But that's not important. This is going to be a very brief... We're just here because of this riffing fucking guitar right now. Sounds awesome, right? So we're just going to let that rock in the background. I'm, I'm close to beating it, actually. We're getting there. We're close, but uh, not quite yet. So anyway, let's get started on this bitch. Uh, the first thing I wanted to talk... I'm going to talk about a few really quick things. So he's going to kind of be rapid fire going on right now. Firstly, if you want, like, if you have anything that you think, like, yo, I want to hear him talk about it, I want to hear his opinion on it, by all means, let me know, just say, like, yo, could you talk about this in the comments, mostly because I'm looking for things people are interested in, I don't know how, I mean, I'm not 100% positive on, you know, the kind of thing, whether or not the things I'm going to talk about are going to be interesting, whether they're, you know, just people don't care about them. I don't know, so obviously it helps me if you're just like, hey, talk about this. I know at least somebody out there is interested in that topic. Um, and another thing about it is I think this might end up becoming something that I do every two weeks. Like, I'm going to have to try and like nail down an actual schedule with which to do it so I actually maintain it and keep it going. Because as we can see, me just being like, hey, I'll try to get to it when I try to get to it isn't working out too fabulously. So, like, trying to actually say, yo, I will do this on this date, and I will have it available by this time. But the reason why I might end up doing it every two weeks now instead of every one is because, uh, like, paying attention, trying to find things. Sometimes there's just not much to talk about. So if there's nothing that I can't fill, like, if there's nothing to talk about, then there's no reason to throw something up just so I, like, look for something just so I can talk about it versus me actually caring about it. That kind of thing. I don't want to be the one of those motherfuckers that's like... Hey, uh, I couldn't care less about Justin Bieber, but everybody hates that motherfucker, so let's talk about Justin Bieber so I can get clicks. Like, I, I don't care about that. That's not what I'm interested in. I'm not... I want to stay away from that. So, um, I'm not going to end up doing anything like that just to try and, you know, get attention to myself. I want to actually try and talk about things that I care about. So... Moving right along from that, we're just, this is going to be another quick, like I said, uh, all this stuff at the beginning is going to be kind of quick. Fighting games. I know I have not been doing anything at all. Like, I haven't been just, like, not recording. I haven't been playing them. Period. I have not. I've been trying to get through my massive Steam library, uh, trying to put a dent in that bitch. I have a bunch of console games I still have not yet played. There's a, I, TV shows are stacking up. Books are stacking up. Everything hobby entertainment wise on my end is just getting to an absurd level of of uh, Things like ever I have I'm staring at my bookshelf right now I have it organized so that books I still need to read they're not like you know put away really they're just stacked on their uh, They're just stacked on the backs and so they're just kind of piled up there are eight of them right now and technically three of those eight are compilations of other books like it's uh there's this guy it's a uh, I tweeted about it a little bit um it's a book series called the black chronicles and they made they ended up doing it's been out for a long time I think the first book was written in the like late 80s or something like that um so it's been out for a long time and the author put down um or not the author the publisher of the books ended up releasing like compilations of them so like they're the first three books are all like one story by itself and then the next, I think, two books are, you know, kind of, like, related to each other. They revolve around each other, and then it kind of gets to another story. And so they make compilations of those. So technically, three of those eight books are actually, like, I think, actually, eight? Because I think it's, no, seven. Because I think one of them is three books, and the other two are two books. Anyway, needless to say, there is not enough time for me to be doing everything right now. And unfortunately, fighting games require a huge time investment in order to actually be competent at them and actually to in order to like be decent at them that's why something like blaze blue i'm fine with because like i don't have to learn i know everything about the system uh i know characters i can pick them up fairly easily and i don't really have to spend time in contrast to guilty gear where obviously i know very little about the system i know very little about the characters like theory wise and you know character move sets and all that i get it i understand i can pick that stuff up very quickly it's the execution that has to catch up with all of that that never really does catch up. I, I never put in enough time 
to catch my uh, my hands up with my brain, I guess would be the proper way to put that. I can never execute what I actually like plan on doing. Never works. Never works. So, um, but even, like I'm just I'm not there. I'm not intentionally ignoring it. I am trying. Uh, I do want to play. I do. I really do want to play Sin. I was set on playing Sin. Uh, I had started to learn him, and then school started, and that kind of just kicked everything else to the curb. I had to get back into the swing, you know, the school mentality. Actually making sure I do all my work, go to all my classes, etc. That's something I've been very bad with. I skip classes a lot. <laughs> so, um, I've been trying to get back into that, and so I've kind of ignored anything that requires too much of a time investment. And fighting games, unfortunately, has been a casualty of that. Um, but I will get to, I promise, I really do want to play Sin, especially after seeing, uh, I don't know how many of you guys saw that set that, uh, Mr. Biscuits streamed, but it had, who was it? It was Fino, who was one of the best, probably the best Venom player, Endo, who is probably the best chip player, because I haven't seen Sumido in a day, I haven't seen Sumido in ages. So Endo might be considered the best chip player now if Sumido is indeed just gone, if he's not playing anymore. Uh... Fab, who is obviously one of the best Guilty Gear players in the world, and definitely the best Potemkin player in the world. Uh, Hase? Or is it Hagi? I think it's Hase. I don't know how to pronounce it. Hase? Hase? I don't know. Uh, he played Slayer, and then Gaku, who plays Sin. And watching Gaku Sin was like, damn. This character, I mean, I already was interested in him, but that was like the final, you know, stamp of approval. Like, damn, I can really make this character work, and I'm very interested in making that happen. So, I'm very, I, I'm excited to learn him, I just haven't had the time yet, so I do apologize for that, but I'll get to it, those of you that want to see Guilty Gear. So, next on the docket, I just wanted to do a quick thing, like, I, I, they, I just saw a story of uh, Limbo being released on the PS4. Nothing against Limbo, beautiful game, lovely game, I enjoyed the hell out of it, I've actually been meaning to go back through and get all the achievements for it on Xbox just because... I don't know if I actually will, but it, it's something that interests me because I really did enjoy Limbo. It was a very, very fun game. But it's kind of highlighting to me like why I definitely want to get more games now on the PC. Because no matter what happens, if my PC if my PC dies, I can immediately pick up everything that I already had on it. I'm going to get a new PC, I'm going to get a new laptop, something or other. All of it is right there on my Steam library. In contrast to, uh, you know, like my Xbox, my, all that stuff, it's just, um, if my Xbox dies, all I lose, oh, I, I kind of, I kind of got ahead of myself. If my PC dies, like, I need a PC. I am trying to be a programmer, so obviously having a computer of some sort is kind of necessary for programming. Um... I do a lot of video editing, it's not a lot of video editing stuff, but I'm very, it's a, it's an, it's a hobby that I like to do. I'm trying to, uh, I've been thinking about trying to get into uh, graphic editing as well, so I can actually kind of put, you know, like how everybody has their custom uh, thumbnails for their videos, they have custom wallpaper for their channels, all that kind of stuff, that's something I want to try to learn as well, just for shits and giggles, so I can kind of, you know, sparkle up my shit. And so obviously all those things you need a PC for, versus... If I lose my Xbox or if I lose my PlayStation, I lost an Xbox or a PlayStation. That is a singular purpose entity to me. I have no, I don't care that it can play Netflix. I don't care that it can connect to Facebook. I don't care about all that additional shit they're trying to throw on there to try to make it like your media center or whatever nonsense they call it. All I care about are the games. And so, like no matter what happens in the future, 10 years, 15 years down the line when it's no longer easy as hell to find an Xbox 360, if my Xbox 360 dies, I may lose all that shit. I can't easily replace it. Versus, anything that I have on the PC is going to work. Period. The only issues that may stem from that is having, you know, like, updated DirectX things, which has actually, there are a couple games that I can't play unless I go track down older DirectX files, and I'm too lazy to do that. Um, but that's the only thing, like, sometimes there is, uh, some software incompatibility, hardware incompatibility, I'm sorry, uh, with software. Sometimes that happens, but very, very rarely. So in general, if I buy a game on the PC, I'm set, I'm good. Versus something on the console where it's like, I have not used 
my Xbox, my my normal but first edition Xbox, have not used that since maybe a year or so after the Xbox 360 came out. Yet I have some games that I absolutely fucking adore that I cannot get anywhere else that I love playing. They're very fun. I'm staring at my, just to get an example. Otogi. Uh, the original Otogi was okay. It was pretty good, but it wasn't great. Otogi 2, however, was one of my favorite games on the original Xbox. It has no backwards compatibility with the 360. The 360 is selectively backwards compatible, so some games are, some games aren't. Unfortunately, Otogi 2 is not one of them. It is not available on the PC. I have no alternate ability to play that game aside from dusting off my old Xbox and hoping it still works. That is it. Versus, again, the PC, I got it forever. That will never, these games will never be irrelevant. They are always at my fingertips. And so, like, all these people are talking, most people talk about, you know, like, oh, PCs are more powerful, I can get faster frame rate, I can get better graphics, I can build better shit for a similar price, blah, blah, blah. I don't give a shit about any of that. Pure convenience. And the PC wins that every time. And, like, I'm not even trying to get into, you know, like, the PC Master Race bullshit. I know most people treat that as a joke. Like, it's just kind of like, ah, PC Master Race, ha-ha! <laughs> uh, but some people are very serious about it, and it's kind of sad. But I don't want to get into that. So let's just move right along. These are not as rapid fire as I was expecting them to be. I ended up going into a bit more detail than I originally planned. But let's just continue. I'll, I'll have other topics to do next time. Cool. So... This one will definitely be fast, because I'm just laughing at some motherfucker. Uh, I'm not gonna say the name, because I really don't care enough to make sure that I got the name right. I don't care. It was some, like, former C... I don't know if it was a former CEO of, like, the American version of, uh, Sega of America. The American version of Sega of America. If they were the CEO of Sega of America, or if they were, like, the head... They were the head of something. I don't know. They were high up uh, in corporate. That's all I know. But this motherfucker came out and said... It's really disappointing to see where Sega is at nowadays because if they had made the correct decisions for the last 20 years, they could have been at the same level as Microsoft or Sony at this stage. <laughs> I'm just kind of sitting there like, no shit? They, if they had not made bad decisions, they would have done better. Wow! There's a revolutionary concept! If you don't piss off your fucking fan base, your fan base will make you a popular company brand name. There's a shocking fucking... Just, it kills me. Like, I'm just staring at that. Like, why is this a story? No shit! So anyway, I just wanted to laugh at that for a bit, and that's all That's all I gotta say about that. So let's move right on to this game. Yeats! Fun as hell. I'm actually gonna show you right now a little bit of gameplay. So go ahead and turn so you can see this... this ridiculously compelling and fantastically diverse uh, combat system that I'm about to- oh god I got hit. The hell did- was that a fire? must have been a fireball that I was- oh god I got hit again. I shouldn't be getting hit because getting hit leads to death and I don't like dying. Dying is not good. I think that's it actually over here. Yep that's it. So that was a showcasing of the game's battle system. Basically all that- just to give it to you in the basics. You can't hit anybody head on. If you hit them head on you take damage like you just you trade damage if you get hit from behind you take damage and the enemy doesn't if you get hit from the side you take damage and the enemy doesn't it goes all around too so you want to be hitting enemies from the side and blowing them up so this game is just the first game this is this is east 2 the very first game was ridiculously hard in terms of boss battles the regular fights as you can see not exactly the most challenging of elements ever produced in the world but the boss fights were very real very difficult and they were very challenging and i loved them so then you get into this game and the very first boss fight that you get into is again what shit what was it up against it was against some like floating dude who would close uh his arms i think it was his arms around i'm trying to envision it i can't really envision it entirely properly he would close some aspect of his body around his chest and his chest had this like gym that you were supposed to hit and when he he would fire things in like a bullet hell kind of a scenario where it would be like five waves of things with a very very small distance between them just barely enough for you to stand in and not get hit so that was basically the entire point 
However, I didn't know this game has magic. So as you can see, I just shot a fireball right there. I didn't know this game had magic because the first one didn't. And so the only bosses are only vulnerable to magic. You can't hurt them with normal attacks. At least that's how it's been. I don't know if there, I think there's like three more bosses that I have to fight after this. I don't know if any of them uh, break that mold. But thus far, bosses are only vulnerable to magic. However, the first magic spell you can get, which is this fireball, is missable. You can get to the first boss without ever knowing. Actually, I shouldn't say it's missable. Uh, the very first, it's behind this guarded door. There's like these golems out in front of it that you have to kill. But when you first encounter that area, when you first go through that area and explore everything, those you can't hurt those golems. They're too strong for you. You cannot do damage to them. And so your only option is to just leave. You cannot get into that room to get the magic. And so that happened to me. I forgot about it. I continued exploring. I got to the first boss. I spent 10 minutes dying over and over without doing a single point of damage to this boss. And I'm sitting there like, what the fuck is this bullshit? I know these bosses are supposed to be hard, but not even been able to damage this dude for 10 minutes hard? That can't be right. Like, what am I missing? This is obviously this dude's weak point, but every time I run into it, I bounce off this motherfucker and I take damage. This isn't fair. This game is bullshit. And so finally, I was like, okay, how am I supposed to beat this dude? What am I supposed to do? Please tell me, like, is there some environmental thing I gotta pay attention to? Uh, am I supposed to like sneak around him which is impossible because he stays up at the top of the level like you can't get behind him What am I missing? And so then it's like this boss can only be damaged by magic only use your fireball and I'm sitting like what the fuck? That's what is magic been in this game that pissed me off so much because I completely missed it Ah, so I hope you enjoy stories of my of my failures Well, speaking of failures Let's move right along to Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. God damn it. I Nothing against Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. I really want to enjoy this game. And I think it's kind of uh, a positive... Um, as, what am I trying to say? Uh, it's a positive point, I guess, toward the game that I'm still trying to play it despite how much I hate using the circle pad. The 3DS's circle pad, I hate it. I can't stand it. Uh, I ended up not playing the 3DS. What was the first 3DS? Was Ocarina of Time? Yeah, Ocarina of Time was the first Zelda 3DS remake. I tried to play that because I've never played a... I've never really truly played a Zelda game before. I've mentioned this before, so I'm not going to get too much into it. But And so I thought, hey, 3DS remake of a game, that's a perfect opportunity for me to finally get into this series. And so I try it, and it's like, you have to use the Circle Pad Pro. Or not the Circle Pad Pro, but you have to use the Circle Pad on the 3DS. You cannot move using the D-pad. And I was just like, ah, uh, alright, I'll try. And it took me like 15 minutes where I was like, fuck it, I'm done. I can't, I hate it. I hate that control so much. It pisses me off. And it's the same thing with Monster Hunter. You have to use the circle pad. There is no other alternative to it. And I really want to play that game. I really want to enjoy that game because I do greatly enjoy it. I really like the Monster Hunter series. But it was the same thing with Monster Hunter Try. I think it was like called like Golden or Ultimate. Again, it was some other special edition that was created for the I think the Wii U and the again the 3DS. And I tried to play that and I gave up on it after like two missions because I just I cannot stand using the fucking circle pad. And it's killing me. So please, developers, like every single game you make, please make it possible to use either the D-pad or the circle pad. Don't make it mandatory to use one or the other because people are going to have preferences. And that can mean more sales of your game. That one little thing can mean more sales of your game. And that's what, you know, controls are such a vital aspect. Like, for instance, Mad World on the Wii. One of my, oh my god, I love that game. I love how it looks. I love how it plays. Uh, I love the music. Everything about it, I love it. Except for the fact that you have to use motion controls. For the first 30 minutes of gameplay in Mad World, that shit was amazing. It was so much fun. I was enjoying the hell out of myself. It probably speaks a little bit toward the primal violent part of my brain. That that's a little, uh, gets too much enjoyment from doing that shit. You know, like, doing the motion of snapping a neck or doing the motion of chainsawing somebody to death. That I enjoyed that that much. But hey, you know, we're not in a psychology class right now. We're not 
analyzing my brain and figuring out whether or not I want to become a serial killer. I promise I won't. Anybody in law enforcement or government that's listening to this, I promise I have no interest in killing people. Just disclaimer. <laughs> um, but no, like, it was very fun for about 30 minutes. And then that discovery hits you. That, that, not the discovery, but like the thought hits you of like, I'm going to have to do this for the next like eight hours, 10 hours of gameplay, however long this game is. I'm going to have to keep doing this over and over. It will never stop. Fuck this. I'm done. And that's it was the same thing with every motion controlled game that I've ever come across. I'm just like, fuck it. Don't care. Get it away from me. I'm done. And so, it, it, controls are such a vital part of a gameplay experience that, you know, providing maximum custom ability so somebody can make it fit them. Make it fit their comfort zone rather than trying to say, no, this is how this game controls and you have to do it this way. And so, you know, just throwing that out there for any game designers or future game designers. Try, you know, try to make it as customizable as possible. So next on the docket, what do we got? Shadow of Mordor. So that's one game I've actually been playing a lot. Uh, I beat it. Um, that, that was one of the games that was on my backlog. I did end up beating it. Uh, it's a very fun game. God damn it, the ending. I'm not going to give away the ending. But it's suffice to say the final boss battle is nothing more than a quick time event. That's all it is. There is no uh, real strong lead up to it. Like you do, there is a fight beforehand, but it's no, it's not really that different from everything you've already experienced. Not, it is a little tiny bit, but not really. It's more, pretty much more of the same. So there's nothing really notable leading up to that. You know, this big climax, the final, you know, confrontation with the boss you've been tracking down, trying to fight and kill this entire time. And then all that you get at the end is like a 30 second scene, a quick time event, a minute long scene, done. Credits. The credits, like the fight, like I said, the final battle, and then you know you get some scenes that lead up to the end, and then you have the actual end. I think the credits were about three times as long as all of that. After everything, after the final battle, up to the credits was probably about a third of the time as the credits that's absurd that just sucks and so just throwing that out there like god damn it y'all are killing me with that kind of an ending that is like that's a game ruiner like you this is this is the final moment the freshest memory you are going to ever have of this game is going to be the end of it you need to go out strong or that shit can ruin like everything before it Everything that came before it could be spoiled by a shitty ending. Look at Mass Effect 3. People wrote off the series, the entire series, after the ending of Mass Effect 3. That's how strong a bad ending can impact people's opinion on whatever it is you're making. And that's what it did. Like I was just kind of like, fuck, man. All of this stuff, like, sure, it had its rocky points. It was a little bit of a roller coaster. There were some down moments. There were some up moments. But all of it is just like, all of that leads to this? This this is what I get? This is my reward for doing all this work? Son, come on. And it, it, it was very sad. But the main talking point that I wanted to mention is like, so obviously for those of you that have played this game or seen this game, very heavily influenced by either the Assassin's Creed series, the Batman Arkham series, a little bit by In Infamous is very similar as well. Just kind of games like that prototype, I think, would be another one. Uh, where, you know, it uses a lot of free running. And <laughs> there is just something about these games. They cannot get the free running precise. It's like, the free running aspects of it are enjoyable as hell, fun as hell. You just want to keep using it all the time. Right up until the moment where you absolutely require a set of, like, five precise like frame perfect movements whether it be jumps sprints uh, attack sneak attacks regular attacks whatever you have to do right up until that point where it becomes necessary everything falls apart and you start noticing flaws everywhere like you try to jump a little bit to the left and your dude just jumps straight towards like an enemy or something that you meant to you know dodge completely that they would never find you and instead you jump onto this motherfucker and like alert the entire compound to your existence or 
you want to go sneak attack one specific person and at the last moment the camera swivels a little bit and targets the wrong person and then you end up attacking the wrong person that kind of like that kind of shit happens all the time in Assassin's Creed it happened to me all the time in that game fucking killed me every single time it happened I just wanted to like throw my controller through the screen it killed me and it just like man can you guys please just sit down and nail down the perfect stuff for that like god damn please work on that system because it is has been what like seven eight assassin's creed games i haven't played the, for all i know they could have fixed it in the last like three they put out i haven't played anything since black flag um well they definitely didn't fix it in shadow of mordor <laughs> so please please sit down and you know perfect that system for the love of god for every game that comes out that utilizes that shit in the future, for their benefit, please, make that shit work. But uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about that, again, kind of, it's kind of, it, it stems from Shadow of Mordor, but it's not really specific to Shadow of Mordor. Um, real gameplay enjoyment versus, like, realism. Now, this is something that a lot of people hit on, a lot of people kind of knock gameplay logic um, or video game logic in order to kind of like point out some flaws and some things. So like when you attack a guard and then you're in the shadows, that guard can't find you and that guard goes back to their regular patrol. People are like, ah, this motherfucker got an arrow sticking through his head, but he's going back to his patrol. Like that kind of thing. Where they mock enemy AI and you have to realize like, yes, it's not very realistic. You have a point there. Nobody would really do that. But... Is it better overall for the game for it to be this way? Yes. Absolutely yes. That's why, again, like, just hitting Assassin's Creed. Eventually, once you kill enough guards, guards will stop coming. They will eventually leave you alone and you'll go back to, you know, the neutral feelings and whatever and you can go back about your business. In contrast to Shadow of Mordor, where if you infiltrate a compound and you get noticed and they raise the alarm on you, reinforcements will never ever ever stop coming until you leave that compound and the compound basically resets itself back to you know the original form um and that is that's a nightmare to deal with on a gameplay level because you know you're halfway through this mission you can't leave the compound and now you have to deal with these constant reinforcements you can't like run away halfway through the compound to try to get away like if you run halfway through the compound and hide somewhere Nobody knows where you are. There's nobody near you. Five seconds later, eight reinforcements are going to walk right around the corner, right to where you are, and know exactly where you are every single time. There is no alternative to this, aside from just running out of the entire compound, and like I said, just resetting it back to stage one. And that's a nightmare. It's so... It kills. Like, any kind of a groove you're in, any kind of, you know, like, particular enjoyment you're having when you just realize, like, fuck, I can't do this now. I have to leave. I have to restart. It's impossible. And there are even missions that are set around, like, nobody can notice you, period. Those were the worst because, like, there would just be this random enemy that, like, suddenly turns around and is like, oh, hey out of nowhere like it wasn't part of their normal AI like they were tracking around or something but they would just suddenly turn around and see you and there was nothing you could do and it's like mission failed restart and that was, oh my god and there is it's just you have to realize as a game developer like sometimes you have to sacrifice some degree of realism in order to for your game to like not have that frustration um and that's something I really can't emphasize enough. And I think, you know, some of that's kind of falling by the wayside thanks to all the criticism people get for the way certain things act. And it's just like, no, this is necessary for the game. This is necessary. I mean, it depends on how the game's set up as well. Like, if your game is set up to be completely real, if your game is set up to the point where, like, you need to perform first aid on yourself, if you get a nick on your leg because you may get infected, it may bleed out, the blade may have been poisoned, who knows, if you have something like that, that is based around realism, by all means, sacrifice uh, gameplay enjoyment for realism, because that is why people people are playing this game for the realistic aspect. So really, there, you're not sacrificing the realism for enjoyment. That is why the people are playing the game. 
Obviously, Shadow of Mordor, you're not really playing that game for a realistic experience that's gonna meet something you could go out and do yourself. <laughs> not exactly gonna be walking into Mount Doom anytime soon in the real world. Not gonna happen. Not gonna find many One Rings, not gonna find many Orcs, not gonna find many Urukai, etc, etc. So, as that, that's, that'll be the last point. I do have a couple more things. But we'll hit those when we get to... Oops, my bad. I forgot. I forgot if I click off of that, the music stops. So, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching the brief moment of ridiculously modern and wonderful Yeast gameplay. And I will see you next time.